Hey guys, this is Tomas from Card Overflow, and I'm here with Brent Taylor. And what did you just do, Brent? I just took seventh place at the Timon Regional in Maryland with True Draco Demise. Awesome, let's see the deck. All right, so um, we run two copies of Masterpiece. So most of this is pretty standard. Masterpiece is one of the best boss monsters in the game. He demands an out. Some of your opponents, they only have certain ways to out it. Like, Invoked only has like Fusion plus Alistair run over. Most people go to Bore Load. It puts a lot of pressure on your opponent really fast. It's one of the best class monsters. One Ignis, because it's limited, it gets you Disciples and Heritage, which are really good draw power, um, and also helps you win the grind game, because Disciples makes you so you don't run out of monsters. Uh, more contentious, three Maidens. Some builds run two. We like three because we need to have a monster to tribute over um, our Spell and Traps to pop the enemy monsters. And in my opinion, Maiden gets you a Masterpiece really fast, which is really good. I only drew into two copies in my opening hand, two rounds of the regional which was very, which uh, was not a real an issue. And then the MVP of the deck is three copies of Amano Iwato. I cannot tell you how satisfying it is when your opponent takes 10 minutes to make an opening board and they like got everything like negates, hand traps, and they're ready to like completely prevent you. And then a 10 cent common just completely neutralizes their whole setup. Like this thing, it, it stops Ash. You can just straight up summon a Watto and then play all your draw spells. And then as you build your board, you pop your opponent's board. I could not be more satisfied with this card. Uh, only only bricked from opening two once. And even then, you can just pop with Diagram. So like, very satisfied with the monsters. Um, for spells, you play three copies of Dragonic Diagram. This doesn't need explaining. This is maybe the best field spell in the game. I don't know if it's this or Cosmotown or some other I can't remember. But uh, this card literally unbricks all your hands. It gives your monsters a little extra push. And one hard mode, the Cave Destroying Battle was really relevant because it made it so they had to out Diagram and then out your monster, including the mirror. In the mirror, it's nutty because it not only boosts all the monsters, including your opponents, but also protects theirs. So this card's like insane. I would doubt one of the best cards. Like triple terraforming to search the Dr Dragonic Diagram because it's so good. Um, a little bit bricky in the late game if you banish them, but it happens. Uh, three of the continuous spells, still standard. Disciples helps you win the grind game. Heritage helps you draw. And of course, these cards, the reason a mono works is because you can normal summon a mono, then activate the spell, tribute summon, so you could still have an mono and then destroy your opponent's monsters using the trap or use these to pop their spell and traps. It lets you build a board and break theirs unhindered. So both of these, really good. Um, that's the archetype stuff. We'll go into the draw power. What makes this deck so good is it gets to play like all of the best draw power in the format. Um, is also the best one. Card Demise is insane. I resolved this, every time I resolved this, it was just like a huge momentum swing because you could play Card Demise, you said play Card Demise, then you draw into cards that pop or get your cards out the field to ensure that you have no cards in hand at the end. And because of the old Yosenju trick, you can resolve Card Demise, then resolve a mono to make sure you don't lose them. This card's insane. Uh, duality, I only drew into two of it once, all regional. It really helps you to like unbreak your hands, search for pieces, really says this card. Uh, I left this one for last because I guess I'm a noob. I really don't like Desires as much as it should be. I mean, this card never really ruined me. I banished like, I never banished Double Masterpiece. I never like died because of it, but it's one of the only card in the deck that provides variance. Like you could lose based on your de your Desires mills. It didn't happen to me, but it's the only thing like, it made some games hard. It, made, it was always good, but it made some games a little bit more like sketch. And uh, this is our major innovation is uh, Forbidden 2 copies Forbidden Chalice in the main. So um, this card was pretty much how we defeated um, Abyss Dweller and other sort of monsters going second. And I had no problem setting it going first. It, uh, it negated, it killed a masterpiece. It not only killed a masterpiece, it also negated a bunch of maidens, some macabas. I was really satisfied with this card. I played it all day. Definitely it was a, a good pickup. And um, those are the spells. And then for the traps, like three of the apocalypse, one of the return. I don't know how they could print a once per turn call of the haunted, and I know why this card's limited for good reason. Uh, this card's insane. Uh, messing with their opponent's stats and popping their monsters, these cards are absolutely phenomenal. Um, so those are the archetype stuff. We'll get into the floodgates. One copy of Skill Drain, two anti spell, and uh, we elected to run Monarchs Erupt. It's a contentious issue in the true Draco communities where you play Erupt and no extra deck, or you play an extra deck and you run like cherries. Uh, we went with Erupt because a certain decks can't really play around this. Like, this is really good against 60 card, it's really good against Invoked, it's really good against Trickstar, and it is absolutely terrible in Mirror, but every time I was able to get this card to stick, it was very strong. And then, last card in the main deck is a single copy of Solemn Judgment. 
it was pretty much like the lock piece going first to ensure they can't break your setup. And I was pretty satisfied with it all day. I subbed it out going um, second mode. Would you make any changes to the main deck? Um, part of me would like to test upstart, and part of me would maybe consider moving judgment to the side, which is what my teammates did. He actually, we all played um, the same list, but he elected to side judgment and ran a copy of Rivalry. I'm really interested in running, considering Rivalry because Rivalry prevents you from getting Kaijued, and that's honestly the only real out, easy out to this deck is Kaijuing over your guys. Uh, no extra deck because of Monarchs are up, so go to the side deck. Three copies of the meme. Never cited it, never had a reason to cite it. I love this card conceptually, but it was completely useless all day. I, I probably never ended up cutting it. Um, three copies of Dimensional Barrier, never cited it in, planned to cite it, going the game three going first, never came up. Uh, also might cut this for like a dark card that's better going second. And now cards that actually did side, Dark Hole, Raigeki going second, or acceptable. Uh, really just in the mirror to out Masterpiece, because in the mirror you want your Masterpiece to be Monster Trap, because there's no easy out to it at that point, other than running over in battle. So it's really good to have a Dark Hole Raigeki just as ways to out opponent Masterpiece. Um, two Cosmic, really good in the mirror. I would definitely bump up to three. Pretty much when you're in the mirror, research, resource management is everything, and Cosmic is one of the only ways you can interact with your opponent in a meaningful way on their turn, or just to like, prevent them from maintaining like card advantage. Uh, I cannot say how important this card was for combating True Draco. Uh, ran a third anti-spell for going first against Pendulums, or just any deck, or in the mirror, it's not too good, but you still, I still cited going first, because uh, if slowing them down a turn for their draw spells, is it bad? But this is so easy out in the mirror that it, it's iffy. It was not a god card. And um, one copy of Stormforth, this card is, is really good. Uh, it's cons it may be main worthy, we just only wanted it going second. Which I sort of agree with. There is the line of Storm Forth come out of the trap to trim your opponent's guy on their turn, but that conflicts with card demise because you have to monster have to have a monster in your hand. So Storm Forth, it could be main worthy, but I would I never had a problem citing it, and it was every time it came up, it was very acceptable. And the best card on the side, which I have to get in foil because of one of my teammates' uh, <laughs> declarations, Imperial Iron Wall. This card had saved me so many times, like two evenly matches were negated by this. Like, they just completely throw their turn away. Like, one guy even saw me search this, and he still just evenly, and it got negated. And this card also has, like, fringe utility. It, it beats Invoked. It beats ABC. It beats Trickstar. Like, this card is amazing. MVP of the side. Loved it all day. Awesome. Um, is there anything else you want to say or any shout outs you want to give? I want to give a shout out to Sir Eminon on YouTube. He's the one who made this deck. He's also one of my playtest partners. He is, uh, and my friend Jack, they built the deck and they pretty much just showed me the list two days before the regional and I ran with it and this deck is so smooth. It's really consistent. Um, I, there, there was no point to in, the, in the regional that I felt like the deck was underperforming. It's, it's just strap your helmet on and you win. I don't just, I just, there's nothing like summoning a mono and just drawing like 10 cards of a turn. It's like, it's amazing. Awesome. Well, thanks, Brent. Congratulations on the top. Thank you.